Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You guys awake? That guy's not the same. So to wake you up, I've decided to change the topic. I'm going to be talking about how to get married. <laughs> that guy just woke up. <laughs> he like, Quran is so important. All of a sudden. <laughs> No, I won't change the topic. I was just saying that. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Anbiya'i wal Mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I was really happy that uh, they gave me the last session that says glimmer of hope, or I don't know what kind of flowery language they used. But Shaykh Umar Sulaiman was supposed to be the valley of despair. And you know, Shaykh Yasser Qadi before. So they were supposed to be like hopeless. And I was supposed to be the optimism. But what's crazy is that they were both really optimistic in their speeches and they filled you with hope already so I almost don't have a job now but I will share with you one story from the Quran that I think is very important for especially young Muslims that are going through a hard time not young Muslims the organization I'm talking about you guys like youth of the ummah uh, uh, that are going through a hard time that should take inspiration from and it's not just uh, despair when it comes to sins it's also despair when it comes to your life situation. So maybe you're having a hard time in school, you're not getting the grades you were supposed to get, maybe uh, you know, your parents can't afford your tuition anymore and you have to drop out of school or something like that. Maybe the girl you really wanted to get married told you you're ugly and she's not marrying you anymore or whatever. You're going through some kind of depressing situation and you don't see a way out. And I wanted to share some things from the story of Musa uh, when he was in a situation of despair. So all of you know, and you can call this out and see the strength of the crowd, what is the famous you know, mistake that Musa السلام, made in his young years that led him to run away from Egypt? This is the strength of this crowd, huh? It killed someone, yes, very good. It's, it sounds really good, but in an Islamic convention, a bunch of people are saying, killed someone. It's, just, it's good for the camera, the media is here. But anyway, so yes, he did kill someone and he ran away, alayhi salam. And he reached the waters of Madian. And when he got to the waters of Madian, there were you know, people feeding their animals drink, and he helped these two women, and he came back and sat down under the shade. And you have to, I, I want to just, I'm, I'm fast forwarding to the point I want to get to. And the point is, when he sat down under the shade, Allah Azza wa first mentions, فَسَقَى لَهُمَا ثُمَّ تَوَلَّا إِلَى الظِّلْ Everything Allah mentions in a story in the Qur'an is important. Because the stories of the Qur'an sometimes are years that are covered in two pages, right? So Musa alayhi salam, years have passed by from his young years to the point where he's killed someone, to the point where he's run away from Egypt, to the point that he got to Madian, to the point where he sees these, you know, these people feeding their animals, he sees those women and he helps them. Each of those things did not happen one after the other. There are months and years in, in between. But Allah is very brief in the Qur'an, right? What that tells you is, if Allah puts something in the Qur'an, it must be of very important use. Like there are no details in the Qur'an that are secondary. There are so many things that could have been said about the journey from Egypt to Madian. Which way did he go? You know, what did he eat on the way? Did he meet anybody? I'm sure lots of things happened to him on the way. We don't know any of it. We just know he got to Madian. And a walk from Egypt to Madian is not a short walk. You know? But what Allah chose to mention is, when he got to the waters of Madian and he saw these women, one particular ayah, Allah Azza wa says, فَسَقَى لَهُمَا So therefore, He gave drink to their animals. He, he grabbed the animals from those two girls, and He took them and He fed them. ثُمَّ تَوَلَّى إِلَى الظِّلْ This was also important to mention, young brother. He went back and sat down in the shade. Allah did not say He went back to them and said, no need to thank me. It's okay, sister. You know, He didn't short, make small talk with them. He sat down under the shade. And I'll come back to this idea of mentioning that first before we get to the dua. And the, my talk is really about the dua of Musa alayhi salam. He says, Qala Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. Master, whatever good you send my way, I, my back is broken. Faqr actually, which means bankruptcy in the Arabic language, is also used for a back being broken. When you're, when you're so overburdened on your back that you, it's, it, it snaps. And obviously, our back is a source of strength. Right? So, and Musa alayhi salam has already been described in the surah as wastawa. He was very strong. He was a strong man. And yet he turns to Allah sitting under the shade and he says, whatever good you send my way, I am desperately in need of it. 
in this talk, I want to share with you two meanings of that dua. Just two meanings. And I would hope you, you could remember both of them. The crime that Musa alayhi salam has committed, even though his intentions were good, he didn't mean to kill someone, but it happened by his hand, alayhi salam. It happened. And he, is, he has made tawbah to Allah, he's turned back to Allah. But the question a lot of people ask, you might even ask yourself, I know I've made tawbah, how do I know Allah actually forgave me? I know I feel bad about what I did, and I asked Allah to forgive me, and I prayed and I've cried, but how do I have a guarantee that Allah has actually forgiven me so I can move on? This is an important question for you and me and for a lot of people, because when we do make sins, and we do, it's not an if we do sin, it's a when we do sin, then we have to be able to move on, otherwise the thought of that sin can be paralyzing. You won't be able to do anything in your life, because it's bearing down on you so much, it kills all of the hope in your life, and you say, I'm going to hell anyway, might as well just whatever. And you start dropping your obligations, and you start falling into sin without any regard, without any restrictions, right? So, being able to know to some extent that Allah has forgiven you and Allah has forgiven me is important. If we can't have it for sure, at least some indication should be there. Now Musa alayhi salam has committed this mistake. He's run away. He's, in a, he's not in a situation of comfort. He's homeless. He's in rags. He has no money to his name. He's a fugitive from the law. People are looking for him and if they find him, the command is not to arrest him and take him to court. The command is to kill him on sight. So it's not like the cops are looking for him and they're going to arrest him. The cops have been given the order, shoot to kill. The, the chiefs have made a, a plot among themselves. If they find you, they're going to kill you. He's got a whole bunch of problems. And despite all of his problems, and he, the biggest problem you could imagine being a man of Ihsan, because Allah tells us that he was a very spiritual man. In the same story, you would think in, in light of all of those problems, you would think the biggest problem he has is not knowing for sure whether or not Allah has forgiven him. So he travels in all of this despair and he sees two girls that need help. And he helps them out. And Allah mentioned that first in the same ayah. Allah mentioned that first. It's not even a separate ayah from the dua. It's the same ayah. He, met, he helped them and then what did I say? What did he do after he helped them? He sat under the shade. So he didn't sit close to them. The idea Allah describes is he didn't want to be around them. This part of his character. Because he knows they're girls. So he went over far away from them. And he sat under a shade. And when he sat down, and this is the only home he has now, is a shade under a tree. That's all he's got. Maybe under a rock. And now he says, whatever good you send my way, I am totally bankrupt. I could use it. The first meaning of this dua is that he feels that if he gets an opportunity to help people, to do a good thing, he is bankrupt. He could use as many good deeds as he can get. Because he knows what he has to make up for. You and I have to feel desperate to want to do good things if we have a dark past. If you've made mistakes in life, and if I've made mistakes in life, that should actually make us desperate to want to do the next good thing. To want to do the next good thing. And by the way, Musa alayhi salam is already clear as a man of spirituality. He prays, he makes dua. Even when he was leaving Egypt, he made dua. So good deeds are not just spirituality because he already had that covered. What he means by khair here is an opportunity to help people. Because he helped people, didn't he? He helped people and he sat back down and said, yeah, it's like he's saying, Ya Allah, if you let me help other people, I'll help them too. I know what I need to do. I am so desperate to want to volunteer for the next project. I am really into it. So when a young man here who lived a party lifestyle makes tawbah, then his tawbah does not just include that he prays a lot, and he recites Quran a lot, and he makes a lot of dua, but it also means he is constantly looking for opportunities to help people. He's trying to help his family, he's trying to help the neighbor, he's trying to help old people in the neighborhood. He are constantly looking to help people. And that is how you will know when Allah keeps sending you opportunities to help people, you know you're on the road to forgiveness. That's the first meaning of this dua. That people of sin will be desperate to do what? To help others. Because they know that's their road to forgiveness. That's how they know Allah gives them, gives them opportunity to make it up. The second meaning. 
How many desis in the house before I give you the second meaning? Because it's important to know. Okay. Sometimes for tafsir in ulum al-Qur'an, you have to study whether you're talking to desis or not. But anyway, so, so for desis, this is important. He says, Ya Allah, whatever good you send my way, I am desperate. Not just good deed, but good. I mean, I don't have clothes. I don't have a house. I don't have food. I don't have a job. I don't have a place I can call home anymore. I'm a fugitive. I'm running away. I got nothing. Ya Allah, send me something because I am literally bankrupt. I got nothing. It is a dua of desperation from a man who has nothing left. He has nothing left. He's sitting under the shade in the ultimate state of desperation. I will come back to him in a second. Who did he help? Who did he help? Two girls. These two girls, usually they stay on top of the hill the Quran tells us. They don't come down and feed their animals. Like all the other an people, the people that are feeding their animals the water or giving them their animals water, they go at first and then after they're all done, then these two girls and feed, go and feed their animals. You know why? Because those men down there don't respect women. If they respected women, they would have given them some space so they can do their work too. But they want to rub elbows with those women or whistle at them or howl at them. They're perverts. They don't respect women. And these girls know. They probably know from experience. So they're not going to go down there again. So they have to wait the entire afternoon until they're all done and they're by themselves and then they can go down there. Right? And the story also tells us in Surah Al-Qasas that their father is an old man. So he can't do it. So these girls have to be out in the workforce by themselves. Women in the workforce in the Quran, ladies and gentlemen. But anyhow, so these girls have to be by themselves and they have to wait all afternoon. Musa alayhi salam walks up to them and tells them, what is wrong with you? Why are you like tug of warring with these sheep? Because the sheep don't know these men are disrespectful. I should wait till they're done and then I'll go for the water. Their sheep see the water and what do the sheep want to do? Go down there and they're pulling and the sheep are pulling and they're pulling and the sheep are pulling. And Musa alayhi salam walks up and basically tells them, you two are weird. What is going on here? You know? So he helps them. What does that mean? He took the, the sheep, he walked down there, pushed those men out of the way, gave the animals drink, came back up, right? You know what that tells you? Those girls went home early or late that day. They went home early that day because the work got done a couple of hours early. Now who's at home? Who did I say lives at home? old father. He notices you girls are home three hours early. What's going on? Well, there was this guy. They don't know his name is Musa alayhi salam. They don't know he's going to be a messenger. They didn't ask for his autograph, nothing. So they go, there was this guy, he helped us out. He took it and, and the, now the only thing that this man, these, this man who's a father of two young women, the only thing he knows about Musa alayhi salam is not because he's met him, not because he's read about him like you and I have. The only thing he knows about this man is from who? His daughters. That's it. That's it. By the way, this story has despair all around. There's a father who's too old to be able to provide for his family. He has to send his daughters out into the workforce. That is despair. Those girls have to work in, envi in an environment where men don't respect them. That is despair. There is there's hopeless situation. Musa alayhi salam is homeless. That's despair. There's depressing situation all around. Now these girls come back home and they tell him there was a really strong man, look kind of homeless, raggedy clothes. He came, he grabbed our sheep, fed them, and brought them back. He said, Did he ask you for money? Did he did he was he staring at you? Was he making small talk? Did he, did he try to like, you know, say salam a little too many times? Not anything? And they say, No, Dad, you know, we know what men are like. We go out there every day. We know what he was like. He just he just handed us the sheep and sat back down under a tree and looked like he was praying or something. And it wasn't like one of you guys who would sit down under the tree and go back like... Did you say something? Wait, was there, is there something else I can do? No. He's done. He's just talking to Allah now. He doesn't need their attention anymore. So the father hears this and what does he do? Now, I've left Musa alayhi salam's part of the story. He's back under the tree asking Allah, Ya Allah, send me something. He, now, if you're a father, I'm a father of four girls, two of them are sitting here. If my girls are teenagers, 20 years old, 22 years old, and they have to work outside. And, I, and he says, go get that man. I want to I talk to him myself. If you're a father, do you send both of your daughters or one of your daughters to be safe? One of them or two of them outside? Two. Two. They can protect each other. One's better than two. He sends one of them. He has that much trust in his daughters that when they describe Musa alayhi salam as an honest guy, 
Then he says, that's good enough for me. Because his daughter's word is good enough. Fathers better listen. Your daughter's word should be good enough. There's good communication skills here. But anyway, so he sends his daughter. One of them came walking over to him despite her shyness. So she comes to him and she's shy. She wants to talk to him, but she's shy. And she's shy to speak. One meaning is, is actually despite her shyness, she speaks. She speaks. Or it's tamshi ala stihya, both of them. She was walking shyly, because when there were two of them, they were brave. She's only one, she got nervous. So she got up to him and she says, Inna abi yad'uka, my dad is calling you, all right? My dad, no doubt, is calling you. So he can pay you. The point I wanted to make is, Musa asked Allah, Ya Allah, send me something, send me anything. I can use it. Fa. The next ayah says, Fa, therefore, Fa as one of those girls came and said, My dad's calling you. He got a job as a result of, or you wanted to get paid as a result of his what? His dua. Now, I said, How many desis in the house? Here's why. You know this thing we have, a genetic disorder in the Indo Pak subcontinent called takalluf? You know what takalluf means? Takalluf means, Nay, 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 no, 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 brother, no, 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 no. You go to somebody's house, they're offering you tea, and you say a thousand times what? No, 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 please, please. No, 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 Right? That's what you do. And then they don't bring you tea because they're Arab and they're like, okay, la ya'ni la. No means no, more for me, you know? And then you're leaving their house like, bade bat tamiza chai bhi ni pilayin logo ne, like, you know, like, but anyway, the point is, we have this thing called takalluf. And takalluf means if somebody's offering you something, what do you say first? No. No, I'm okay. Dude, your shirt is ripped, your foot is bleeding, somebody offered you a shoe need, and then they're That's okay, I am okay, I'm okay. And you know what it's rooted in? It's rooted in the idea of self respect. It's rooted in the idea of self respect. You know, they say in Arabic, Izzu rajuli istighna'uhu anin nas. That a dignity of a person is that he doesn't need other people. Right? So if you're constantly asking your, hey bro, can I borrow five bucks? And you got some money, I, I, I'm kind of hungry right now. Hey, can I borrow your laptop? Can I borrow your phone? I gotta make a phone call. Hey, can I borrow your car? Can I? The guy who borrows from you all the time, you start sending him the voicemail. Right? It's like this guy has no respect, he's always begging for stuff. But the other way around, Musa alayhi salam did not ask her for money, didn't ask her dad for money. Who did he ask for help? Allah. Allah sent him money and help through a human being. That help is not coming to you from that person, it's coming to you from Allah. That's why he says, not وَجَاءَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا فَجَاءَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا The fact that she came to him and called him to come because dad wants to pay you is because he made dua to Allah. The job offer came. And what a job offer. He gets to the house and Musa has got a heavy heart because he killed somebody. He's got a lot on his mind. He's been traveling on his own. He's got a lot to unload. So, He got to the house. He told his, her father the whole story. Everything. I was born in Egypt. You know, I was supposed to be killed when I was a baby. Got raised in the castle. Accidentally killed somebody. Ran away. All oh, the whole nine yards. Oh, and my, my you know, my stepfather, etc. This person, this adopting father, he's a pretty bad kafir guy. You know, and the entire police administration is looking for me, etc., etc. He's given him the whole story, and who's listening from the kitchen? Two girls. Two girls listening. And one of them calls her dad. She says, you know, she calls her dad, Abba, Baba, Daddy, Papa, Idra, Idra. Just come here, I gotta talk to you. And she says, Ya Abba, tista'jirhu. Dad, hire him. Dad, give him a job. Don't just pay him for what he did right now. And by the way, what he did was voluntary or paid services? What did he do? Call it out. Ah, so he doesn't turn to the sister and say, Sister, I did that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm simply a volunteer looking for the next good deed. I shall not get paid. He is smart enough to know when Allah sends him an opportunity. He went straight. He was like, let's go. I'm going to get paid. He sees that that is the answer to the dua. What am I trying to tell you? If a friend is offering you a job, if somebody comes to you and say, hey, I wanted to, I, I noticed that you know you got laid off, There's a, there may be an opportunity in my company, I can put in a good word, etc., etc. And you say, no, no, brother, thank you, it's okay, it's okay. Stop being stupid. You made dua to Allah, Allah sent your friend. Allah sent you a LinkedIn profile. That's how it works. 
That's how it works. It's not, Musa Ali Sam did not have takalluf. Right? Leave it, sister. You're, it's okay. I don't need help. I'm just going to ask Allah because until fruits start falling from the sky, I will not eat. No, that's not how life works. These are real life lessons in Quran. So he goes and he tells his, you know, this, this man the whole story. And then the girl says, hire him. Hire him. And he comes back out of the room and says, I want to marry one of my two daughters to you. Now let me tell you guys about despair. Brothers here. How many brothers? Don't raise your hand. Just raise, raise the level of sadness in your eyes. Looking to get married, can't find anybody. Nobody's interested. Let me tell you. There is hope for you in this story. Musa alayhi salam went to a house homeless, jobless, and he's got a rap sheet. And he gets what in two and five minute conversation? What happens? Hey, I'd like to marry one of my two daughters to you. <laughs> so I'm not sure your interview is going to be that bad with her father. So when you're going in for an interview with her father, then just know that it's not as bad as Musa alayhi salam's case. Have some hope. Be optimistic. Okay? So sh anyway, he says you should get married, but Ala and Ta'jurani Thamaniya Hijaj, you should work for me eight years. If you do 10, it's up to you. I don't want to be hard on you. I'm not trying to push this on you. I'm not saying you have to marry one of my two girls. I'm just saying, if you do, then you should work for me for eight years. And you're like, man, that's tough, man. I got to work for my father-in-law eight years. What, we whoop for my, by my in-laws? You know, for eight years? But you know what he's realizing? It's, there's so many problems that are being solved right now. He's got two girls who live in a society that has good men or no good men. Is that already clear? There are no good men in that society. He finds a good man who's honest enough to tell him even the most embarrassing parts of his past. He says, good men like that are hard to find. And my girl likes him because she said hire him, which is code for, come on dad. Okay? Because she didn't say hire, she's not going to say dad, come on, hook a sister up. She's not going to talk like that. She's going to say hire him. But when, she hire, when he hires him, he's going to work at the house. And he's going to work at the house with two unmarried girls. What fitna do you want? You're a smart man. You're like, if I, if I trust him enough to hire him, I should trust him enough to marry him to one of my daughters. And that leaves me only one daughter to worry about. But there's another problem. If I marry him off and he goes away, which he can't, by the way, why can't he go anywhere? Even if he marries homeless. So let me just marry him off and provide him eight, eight years of work visa authorization and H1. And it can be extended up to 10 years. So that solves that problem. Now he can save up and live here. And at the same time, I have someone to protect the household and someone to take care of the chores of the house. And it gives me eight to 10 extra years to find a boy for my second daughter. Because if he left, then that girl would have to go by herself to feed the animals. And that's way more dangerous. So I need to look out for my younger daughter, my older daughter, myself, the household. This young man's a good man. He needs an opportunity to. All of that is solved because Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Allah, help me out here. All of that is solved. Allah has plans. He helps multiple, everything gets resolved. And he said, you know, I don't want to be hard on you. If you want to go back to be homeless and go sit under the rock, that's fine. There's, I'm not pushing this on you. You'll find me from good people. In other words, even though you're family, I'm, I'm, I'm putting this on you that I'm going to be fair to you. I'll be good. I'll pay you what you deserve to be paid. You know? By the way, there are some other things in here that, that you should know. If you're in one of those situations where you have to work for your in-laws, in most Muslim cultures, it is humiliating to work for your in-laws. Right? It's humiliating. I don't think any of you is more man than Musa alayhi salam. He worked for his in-laws eight years. So there you have it. Allah put that in the Quran for a reason because we make life hard on ourselves and Allah makes life easy for us. There's a reason he did that. There's another thing there. You're despairing because you can't find a girl. You, find, you can't find a, a girl for your boy or a boy for your girl from the same zip code in Hyderabad or in Pakistan or in Egypt or Cairo or whatever. You can't find somebody from the same you know, place. You're like, I can't marry. And he knows he's living in a non-Muslim society. He can't find a good boy. So he actually married his Arab daughter to a child of Israel. That's an interracial marriage. The only marriage mentioned in the Quran is interracial. So long as you have a good boy. You have a good boy, he meets you, the girl likes him, he's a good character, good enough for me because I know decent people are hard to find. What I, the reason I brought this part of the story up to all of you 
is that that dua, that dua in Surah Al-Qasas, Surah Al-Qasas is Surah number 28. Look for the dua yourself. I will not tell you the ayah number. Look for it yourself. Read Quran, don't be lazy. Read it and find it. Why is that dua important? Because one, Allah will answer your dua when you help other people. Because what did he do first in the dua? He gave the water first. And then he made the dua. And therefore, the answer to the dua came. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot to learn here. But you and I are in desperate need of Allah's help and Allah's help is never far. It came immediately. It just came in the form of not only does he have a job now, he has a home now, he is safe now, he has a family, he got, even got married. He didn't even ask Allah, Ya Allah, I'm marriage age, hook a brother up. No. It came from a bonus package, came on top of that. He got married, has a great father-in-law. All of it's taken care of, subhanAllah. So Allah will take care of you, Allah will take care of me. We just have to turn to Allah and ask for help. The last one minute I want to leave you with is that you would say, but that is special because he was a prophet. I'm not a prophet, Allah's not going to specially help me. That happens for like, you know, special people. Let me tell you, every Friday we're supposed to recite the story of the people of the cave. Are the people of the cave, the young men in Nahum Fitya, are they, are they prophets or not? They're not prophets, they're regular Muslims. They are regular Muslims. And when they turn to Allah for help, Allah helped them with a miracle of 300 and some years of sleep. And woke th these are not prophets. Even non-prophets re receive miraculous help from Allah. You just have to ask. And it will, the help will come in ways you cannot even imagine. We have to be people of optimism, of hope, and we have to be a people that learn the du'as from the Qur'an and learn to make them with a sincere heart. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.